spare of the moment? Well, we don't know. And then Herb shows up with a camera this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not sure how that, how that works. But what we're going to do is go through the week, and each uh, team member will get up and talk about a particular day. And uh, so this is actually our first Casa Grande planning group meeting. And the purpose and objectives this morning is to update you, Wally, on the week's activities. Uh, what we did, what we learned, and kind of where we feel our next steps are. <coughs> Look at some of these next steps, and we'll go through those, and maybe you can pull a piece together as we cover the rest of it. But, uh, you know, we wanted to complete the warehouse design, which, to working a little harder and a little later last night, we were able to... Uh, I do to do that by identifying the tasks and the variances. Um, we have not established times yet for the particular tasks. And established a number of team members. We're not sure there yet. Looking at that piece with the warehouse and some thoughts there as to if someone's going to use the ingredients coming in, is that uh, going to a conversion unit? because of the proximity of where it is, still needs to be a warehouse, part of the warehouse unit. There's some things there. This would be like cheese? And yes, and yeah, your seasonings and things. Mm -hmm. um, complete the support system design. Uh, what uh, what are we going to do with the technical and the engineering group, the administration, and uh, what is what is ER? Where does that fit in? Define the next steps to compute, to complete the uh, future state model. And then want to review Dennis Frezzo's questions with you and get an interpretation that we all understand and help us define what those needs are so we can we can answer those. And define the objectives of the Wednesday training meeting. We've heard of it, not sure exactly what we need to do there. So that kind of gets us up. Go back now and uh, take a look at uh, Monday. Who has Monday? Beat up. <coughs> and as we go, I guess if there's any questions, just ask questions. Anyone in the group, uh, we want to bring you up to speed, but make sure everybody has a clear understanding of what we've done all week. So we won't keep it too structured. Monday had planned on going through fairly, fairly rapidly because you were here. Involved in most of the meeting on almost all of, all of Monday. Monday we did our get acquainted type uh, thing. We had started out with setting objectives for uh, for Monday, and then we did Tuesdays uh, too as far as, as far as objective settings. Uh, we went through and tried to identify some of the questions that all the people that were involved in this planning group had. And they ranged everything from where am I in this future plan all the way down to uh, <coughs> points to how are we going to get it initiated and actually to the future uh, plan state. Some of the specifics, and if you look at the wall right ac across from you, that wallpaper was all generated from Monday. And all of the uh, questions or concerns that were brought up were uh, laid out. Some of them we've already started trying to address or have uh, been uh, cleared up from it. Some of them were on this list that was uh, that um, I just went over. We did go through. Uh, did you generate high, some more? We haven't generated more on the. Uh, we haven't generated any more generalities on that. What we did come up with were some specific questions as we were going through uh, some of the individual uh, variance analysis and the uh, flow charts. And those, I think, will all be picked up on the individual uh, explanations as we go through the additional days uh, through the week. We went through the, com the complete concept and design of uh, the high performance system, we reviewed some <coughs> log tapes and were given some light reading about three inches worth. <laughs> <laughs> That's not with <weird>, either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm not too sure about everything.
everyone else, but I know at least I have not completed that yet. Uh, I think everybody in going through the reading material in the various presentations and in going through the uh, steps in creating the high-performance system, the future state one that we're uh, attempting to put together, have, I think in total, wound up coming up with the same general concept to where now we can, or the only way we can get there is to not worry about how we're going to find our way. What do we want it to be? We'll worry about the mechanics of getting from here to there at a later date. We just try, we, I think, eliminated trying to put together the mechanics of doing it, and let's just see what we want it to be. And the only item we did not complete on Monday was to begin the uh, variance matrix for PC, and that was picked up on first thing Tuesday morning. And we Uh, all of the objectives that were listed on Mondays, with the exception of the uh, variance matrix, matrix, were addressed and completed. Any uh, questions on Monday's agenda? Well, let me let me ask about the uh, concerns. Uh, you say that some of them were touched upon or hit. Uh, do you all feel there's a need to go back through and kind of formalize this and, and cover those that uh, are still out there? Do you, you want to go back through the process like we did when we I don't this? think we've really I addressed these questions. We just we came up with more in other more yeah, specific no, areas. What we've done, what we've well, done, Monday's uh, questions that came up were really generated from most people's still thinking in a traditional manner. A lot of the questions that have been generated since are generated from the viewpoint of a high performance system. Well, are I think they, are they, they better probably, or worse? I think, well, I think they would be more specific. Uh, okay. Okay. But this, this might be something to go back through because Absolutely. I just tried to pull one out here, 10 <laughs> timetables for bringing new managers on board. You know, that I would feel better if I had a timetable yeah. where people That's were going to be here and knew that. And you can put that piece aside and get on with something else. So there's some up there that. Any, any suggested approach, any uh, recommendations with regard to how we get these resolved, get them answered? One of the things I, I, don't I, want to talk about. I think we need to do either you know, today or, or by Monday at least uh, would be to. Which one of those questions can we address? You know, for example, the timetable for bringing new managers on board. I, I think we can do that. Uh, I think that's probably a priority in everyone's mind here because there's, what do they look like? What do they feel like? <laughs> uh, you know, that kind of timing, uh, along with the non-exempt group. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe it would be a good idea if we just go back through these questions and cross off the ones we're not interested in or we've already answered, and then. Present to you. And uh, probably put a sure. time schedule on the others. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. true. When they have to be answered. Right. Right. I think that's one of our problems right now is being able to establish a real clear cut time schedule on when some of these things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When would we want to do that? It was a work day for us. I think it was our first attempt at really getting into what a designing an organization was all about, and the PC matrix was the uh, was the first part of that. Uh, we began, we reviewed Monday's events, first of all, Tuesday morning, um, and then we really jumped right into the middle of the PC matrix, and as you can see, the work on the backboard is kind of the resulting uh, result of that work. Uh, we split up into groups. Each of us took a phase of the uh, phase of the data chip design, and using kind of as a guide what the pack group committee had done for us, laid those tasks and uh, for those variance analysis, the variances out into that matrix that you see on the back board. What's the significance of the red? The red items are the material variances that we decided were, with Herb's direction, were the areas in which we really needed to look as far as the ones that were 
the most significant as far as effect in the uh, in the operation. So we took those out first, and the ones that you can see with the little blue marks beside them were the three areas that we felt or at least had the most interdependency on each other. And, uh, probably well, the ones what are some examples of those? I can't okay, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, defects. Color, I believe. Defects, color, color and scrap. Scrap. I think were the ones that came out as being three areas that needed quite a bit of control. Um, and we really spent the whole day doing that. After the matrix, uh, we established this matrix, we did sit down and work on the control charts for a while, trying to decide on these variances, who was going to control them, where they'd be controlled. That was relatively successful. Uh, we uh, struggled with that, at least I did, and, and Homer and I working together struggled with that as far as trying to pull out what the key, actual key variances were. But we were, later on during the day, able to, able to pull that together and establish some of those. Did you all have a problem with <clears throat> not understanding or knowing all the specifics of the line layout and elevations? And it was, no, that really wasn't the problem. The problem was uh, trying to decide between key and not key. Uh, we got into, at times we were too general, at times we were too specific, at least in our group. I'm not sure how everybody else felt about that. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. It was kind of, a, kind of a, just a learning process to really key in on what was key to that operation. There is someplace here a... Another way to, uh, uh, another nice way to look at Tuesday is what we did Wednesday morning, and we went through a corkscrew the first thing Wednesday morning and kind of what happened on Tuesday, and this is kind of a summary of that. And as I stated, we did the PC variance matrix, and that took most of the day. We did construct some control charts. Um, we learned what was involved in constructing the variance matrix. Uh, this is one of the things that really popped out, too, for us on Tuesday was that uh, we really did learn that 80% of the variances were caused by 20% of the items, and that was kind of when we got into talking about key variances and picking those out. Okay, now, we what, all, what's, what's that mean for you? Does that mean concentrate on the 20%? Absolutely. I mean, with the time frames involved and um, the things we need to accomplish, that if we can get to 20%, the, uh, take care of 80% of the problems and the rest should fall in line. I think everybody came out with a better understanding of the relationship between between what we are doing, high, high performance system and startup. One of the things we came up with, we all wish we'd been on board a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, this, I think that's very true. After Tuesday, I think we were feeling quite a bit of frustration. Uh, just because of the length of time that it took us to, to construct this matrix and go through the control charts. We all felt, I think, that um, we wish we could have been moving a lot faster. And it was just a slow process at that point in time. Um, I think we came out of there feeling that we could do it. Um, and uh, one of the things, I think this was one of my comments, is, is we really, at least I did anyway, began to understand how traditional thinkers we really were and some things that we had to change. We went through and discussed why those things happened. Um, we stayed with it. And there was some there were some members that were moving in and out that day. Um, Herb pushed us. Uh, we experienced it, and I think that was the key: is that we actually did something on Tuesday. We got into it instead of a, of a kind of a theoretical, conceptual type approach. We got into the nuts and bolts of it and did the work. Dialogue tape was a definite benefit for us. I think kind of summing up Tuesday is that it was a, it was a, it was the first real learning experience that we've had, that we had with the design design process. Uh, I think we came out of it um, very confused and, and struggling at that point. And I think as the week goes on, you'll see that some of those things have, have uh, begin to straighten itself out. That's pretty much Tuesday. Okay. Looking at Wendy's Wednesday's activity plan, we. Again, went back and said what happened on Monday and Tuesday. Talked a lot about the uh, learnings. Um, the Wednesday objectives, which we were working off of this uh, chalkboard over here, trying to get everything done through the weekend. The update, here again, review Wednesday's plans, the blackboard, and update the week's plans. How are we going to get through it? We 
did a variance analysis for corn chips. And we did that by using a control chart, which we found to be better. Uh, blow it out. We've got one behind us here now for the warehouse, and put the variances up, the process and the material. And we were able to experience more that way. Signed some responsibilities and went through that. Study the design guideline concepts. Concepts. We had a couple of handouts that we read through, very good, and they helped us as we did you know, looked at a critique of the potato chip design. And a summary of that is really the corkscrew that we did the next morning. Sounds like let me ask you. Okay. On number uh, five, did y'all go back to any of the uh, past committee's uh, information? <coughs> Yes, yes we did, okay. and added some more. And we have the complete flow chart. Okay. Went through that, but if it, we kind of did that stop. help? Did that help? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Had some some notes there for us. I also with the work that the urban plan had done on their flow chart. Some okay. yeah, some additional so you uh, could see the process, or at least the, how they had gone about doing it. Yeah, and after we laid that out on the flow chart too, it was uh, I think without doing that. What we did yesterday as far as the warehouse would have been very, very difficult because we were, took us a while even using their information, but by, I guess it was by the end of the day, and we'll get into that, but I think we really got an, had a under, better understanding of what that was all about. But. So then Thursday morning kind of summarizes uh, Wednesday, the corkscrew, and what happened? Uh, some confusion, especially about uh, what the design as far as social systems and teams. Light went on about the specialty pieces. What was maintenance going to do? What was QC? What were these things? How are these functions going to fit in? Give me some examples of light bulbs. Well, I think that was my comment, and, and what I was talking about there was I finally realized what the specialist task really was, and that there would be a individual within that conversion unit that would, for instance, do maintenance on basically a full-time basis. Let's say we were talking 49 percent of the time. Uh, and then that there would be only one or two. My, my initial thinking was that we were going to train everybody sure. to be maintenance specialists if, if they wanted to, if that's something they wanted to do. Okay. Can I ask a question? Are you saying then that the maintenance individual will be part of the potato chip conversion team? That he'll be a specialist in maintenance? Right. And will he be doing the light maintenance work, or will the other people also be required to do light maintenance work? Yes, they got Both. Yeah, well, the, the, a lot of the core tasks are light maintenance work, uh, PM lubes, uh, lubrication PMs, light maintenance, and then there are going to be more uh, skilled maintenance requirements that the group will want to control too, and those will fall into the specialist areas. And, and one, two, three, or, or maybe even more people might have that particular specialty, but maybe just one, depending on, on the needs of the group. Maybe the Up to some startup. level, we're really not sure of yet. Start up where some people may be able to uh, do a lot of the tasks on like the potato chip line, but initially those the PM, even the very uh, minor, they may not be able to do that until further training. Well, we'll we'll, we'll get to a point I, I assume when we'll identify who's going to do what. Yes. Okay. So that's clear to new members as they come aboard. <laughs> we aren't at that point right now. But. <clears throat> And then three here, we were a little apprehensive about would we be able to put it in place because we still didn't have a lot of knowledge as to what it was we were putting into place. Um, yeah, this kind of fits in with two. We were confused about the separation between what the unit would do and what a maintenance group would do. Is that right? I think that's mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number five, going through the actual variance analysis. That was a learning process. The learnings are experiencing. But uh, we like that. <coughs> we like the flow charting method as opposed to just trying to use the uh, variance analysis sheet. Why did these things happen? Uh, a lot of our traditional thinking got in the way. It slowed us up. And we began to ignore the, gosh, let's hurry and get it in place. And is, is Dallas going to support us? And, got on with let's learn what is this idea we're looking for. Again, the practice, the variance analysis that helped the understanding. Uh, 
focused on the outcomes, help make the process flow. You know, help me with this. One. That was when we put together the uh, flow chart uh, for UTC, and then when Herd came back in and then uh, shifted uh, our thinking okay. as yeah. to what the, the consequences That's were. Right. So the process would be frying yeah. what were the outcomes that helped you get your material variances. So we did a little better with some guidance. Okay, so, so that's versus focusing on the step. Yes, okay. we weren't really tying it, tying it together or looking at the consequences, what happens. Okay, okay some generalizations. Um, yeah, if we would have, have looked at the design, let's see here, a detailed review of the design, that probably wouldn't have helped. That's so where we said that back. if we'd have had the answer to start with, and then went back through and, and tried to figure out how we got that answer that we felt as a group that would have been a, a better way to do it. And then we, the light bulb went off and said, that's the same thing we said on the 20th. That, and we, we just relearned it. Now yeah, maybe this sorry, time we'll, yeah. we'll remember it. Yeah. So. <laughs> That'll happen again and again. <laughs> 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 we just stuck our neck out again. Right? Yeah, in that one at least. This has come up uh, before also, and that's to read some of the articles in advance. Uh, would be helpful. Right, yeah. Let me uh, just a point on that. <clears throat> we we want to establish a uh, a library, especially uh, a, a booklet that will help to bring new members up to speed. So as you all are going through and doing the readings, uh, pull out the articles that you you know, think will help a new member. Instead of us dumping the whole packet on them, maybe there's a, you know, a series of things that'll do a better job of bringing them up quickly. Get two inches instead of three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> start out, start out I never thought I'd be an editor. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. He's a journalist. <laughs> yeah, working the flow chart, again, helps with variance analysis, but also doing it as a group. Instead of into the individually, that, that was good. And this keeps coming up. We're going through it several times to get a better understanding. We're, we're seeing that. I think this is your problem. This corkscrew. Thursday was kind of a, a day that uh, had a lot of breaks in it to, as far as getting away from what we were actually doing. We had the Rick Reaver come in that morning. What we did do after the corkscrew is we tried to, to list what the group's reactions were to that packed PC design. And we've got several pages of those that we can read through. And these are, I think, some of the questions that, that Vito was referring to. These are other things that have come up later in the week. One of the things we said about the PAC design was it puts, control, puts the control at the point where it's needed. It gives the, the group control of the things it needs. Okay. <clears throat> now that's a, that's a, a buy-in statement, quite frankly. Is, it, is that the consensus of the group? Is, are you all, all, right. all I, agreed upon that? But I can't speak, I guess, for the whole group. I think what we, when we put, this, put these reactions together, I think if there were any, any uh, negative feelings about any of them, I think that, that they were voiced at that point. In time. You'll see some concerns as we yeah. go through it. Okay. Uh, they aren't concerns that it won't work. It's okay. Uh, this is an area that's still a little fuzzy, and we need to we need to nail some specifics down. And, and the generalist, I think, specialist was one of those areas. So it's on the next page. The the design we think fosters a commitment that's required for that step function increase in, in all of the areas that we want to increase quality and cost. It really reinforced to us the importance of, of being very selective in the people that you bring into the into the system. Not only the managers, but the hourly, maybe even more important. One of the things we, we started talking about was how we were going to do our downtime work if the if the conversion unit is responsible for a lot of its own maintenance. Uh, a lot of that maintenance, Vito raised this issue was will be stuff that are, that's needed to be done when the equipment's down. We just can't send them home when the last bag comes off the sheet. So we'll need to, to find a way to do that. And this 
was a kind of result of that too. For number five, we felt we needed to establish ways to, to measure performance. You know that will fit our system and still fit the corporate structure. Uh, this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago. That's very attractive to us, but it's. Uh, it sounds good, but there's a, there's a whole lot of questions that, that need to be answered and we worked out before what we feel it'll really work for us. Now, the, uh, I think the point you all have to <clears throat> understand on that is that that is a uh, proposal uh, made by the PAC group and uh, we were hoping that you all would understand and buy into some of it, but I think the important thing that this group has to remember is that you tailor what you need to fit our circumstances, okay? And we don't have to do the general specialist thing if, in fact, there is some aberration or some other um, method of getting the same result. The result is, you know, the, the item number one, basically, putting control uh, where you want control to be, and that's with the team. So. If there's some other way of arriving at that, then I think the group ought to work on developing it. Well, either way, we'll be taking it from this point. We okay. probably won't wind up to be exactly that. I think we understand <coughs> what it accomplishes mm -hmm. as far as the you know, unequal power, mm -hmm. uh, the prima donna that it eliminates. Those, those are the, some of the important things that come out of it, and we understand we have to hold on to that however we change it. So. Okay. okay. These are just some other questions. That Kind of read through them, I guess, if you have any, any questions that causes What's for you. What's number nine? Mm -hmm. We like the step feature in the pay proposal. <laughs> we felt that we didn't agree with maybe four months okay. and six months, but but we kind of we kind of like that. We felt that taking that out over a two or three year, we weren't sure where, uh, series of steps did, would help. Did you like that because you read it, or did you like it? because you might have developed something similar to it. I mean, had it not been there, what, what do you think you might have developed? That, see, the, the only danger in giving the group the PAC information is that it kind of gets you to focus in on somebody else's thoughts. And I, um, you know, just saw that as a potential problem, but what I want you all to do is take those things as uh, basically guidelines, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, general information, and then you develop whatever it is you think might fit our situation. Mm -hmm. So my question again is, did you like it because you saw it on the piece of paper and it was the only process you happened to think about, or are there other things, other ways of accomplishing that, that pay uh, scale uh, increase? We, we didn't, we liked it. When we saw it on the paper. We didn't look, we didn't sit down and say, okay, now let's try to figure out other ways that are different from what we do now and different from what's hanging on that or part of that presentation. We didn't say, let's find another way to do it or look at other ways to do it. We just looked at what was there and said, do we like it or what don't we like about it? And kind of came to the, to the consensus that we liked generally what was up there. We liked giving the step increases over a period of time uh, not being too specific about tying it to direct specific performance improvements, and uh, we felt that we could we could work with that structure. That's a piece that we haven't really gotten into, Wally, as far as taking one specific thing like the pay and dissect it and tear it up and then go through even a how might we you know is there some other way or be different? It's kind of we've been pushing some very broad guidelines through the week, okay. and we still still need to do that. With general specialist, the, uh, the pay, mm -hmm. all those. Okay. Mm -hmm. 11 was a point that, that we talked about too, and that was that making sure that, that each of those specialist areas were were perceived to be equal by the, by the people who would be the specialists, so that we didn't set up some some members are safety specialists, and, but the guy that's the, the one of the maintenance or one of the other specialists may think he's still better because this his area is more important than theirs. If we can try to make them so they, they would seem to be equal in importance. One of the <coughs> concerns that Ryber expressed that I 
as we were kind of doing a wrap up with him on Thursday, I guess it was, was the uh, fact that I said, well, we probably will not have a traditional warehouse maintenance guy. It was, and that's all he does. And uh, Robert and his boss were a little bit concerned about that. I think it comes again from traditional experience and traditional thinking. All of the ASRS units we've gone through, people we've talked with, have a very specialized team that concentrates in that warehouse and they do all their repair work because they, the feeling was that you didn't want to pull good old Joe's packaging machine guy off into the warehouse. And my question to you is, <coughs> will that be a problem? Yeah, and the complexity of the system, does that drive that? Yeah. Um, and if so, are you going to have um, equivalent work? We touched on that yesterday afternoon as we went through the warehouse flow, and I'll bring some of that out as we go through that piece, some of our concerns in that area, and how we uh, jail the general specialist to what degree of high tech can they be. Okay. <coughs> to say when we had completed this was about the time that Rick got here. Uh, just before he got here, we heard suggested to us that we that we use this uh, this time with Rick to really prepare ourselves uh, to learn about the warehouse, to use that as a kind of a stepping stone for what we were going to be doing either later Thursday or Friday in going through the variance analysis on the, in the warehouse. And we spent an hour or so with, with Rick here looking at his slide presentation and talking to him and then probably another hour, hour and 15 minutes over in the warehouse going through the, the step by step. Uh, came back here then and spent the last part of that uh, until probably about 3 o'clock when we broke to, to go. We had to go up north and there some house hunting things that had to be done so we just kind of agreed that day we'd, we'd break at 3. We did spend an hour or so though kind of looking at what we were going to try to accomplish in the warehouse and how we wanted to do that in preparing, preparing for Friday. So, do you have let any me, questions? Let me ask you uh, about the, uh, having Rick River come in. Uh, first question is, was that worthwhile? And the second is, uh, if so, would you like to do the same kind of thing with the other design uh, guy? Yeah, one other thing yeah. that, that I mentioned at Calamari one day was that I think this group needs a detailed design review and time schedule review uh, of everything. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to have some time to put questions together yeah. before someone comes out like this. Rick gives them, have those, and if he answers them, he or she answers them, and they go, fine. But if not, you've got just a little bit, maybe a day's notice to put some preliminary questions together because when they, they get here and the presentation starts, you really just tuned in to trying to absorb it. Yeah, get some questions. One of the, one of the things that, that, that came up pretty consistently yesterday was that, uh, you know, we can't really picture that in our minds yet because we haven't seen it work or we don't have enough theory with regard to, uh, to how that design set up. And one of the things I'm particularly looking forward to is is getting a better feel for that knowledge base for, for how's that damn thing going to work out. And the advantage of Rick's is that he had a very nice slide show yeah. that Eaton had given him, and, and then we could go over there and touch 90% of, of what really was going to be, and, and that's not the case. And no. To this, you can't go in there and touch the soap tanks or the pumps or anything. No. But maybe the other guys can give you can bring in process drawings, for example, that have elevation. <coughs> kind of walk through mm -hmm. those elevations and you can see, you know, just on a uh, two-dimensional scale. I think um, it was very beneficial and even more for, you know, on top of what I had gotten in, in yeah. Dallas. And I think every Plus really it's an uncomfortable feeling as candidates are coming in and you're walking <laughs> through. And they'll say, 
what is this? You know, oh, hell, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or That's the other side of that is to have a candidate that knows all that, that has seen the complete layout, knows where every piece of equipment's going to be, and is telling you, well, what it is, is this, 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 and this. Well, thank you. That's the one you hired. <laughs> That's what he's going to recommend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to list here a, a, a number of ways of bringing new members up to speed, and if we can agree upon it, uh, I will set in motion uh, having a design team review here in Casa Grande and uh, ask them to structure that so it can be a learning kind of experience for you. It may take a couple days to kind of get through all the design areas, but if it's worthwhile, then we can go ahead and set something like that. For me personally, if I knew what was in the plan and basically how it was going to work, uh, maybe not all the nuts and bolts, then that would relieve a little bit of the anxiety. And then another piece is, what do we need to get done in kind of a four-week time frame or something, some of that traditional thinking, mm -hmm, and, sure. and put that aside, then I think the, the learning would, would go a lot better and a lot faster. It just seems like there's some loose ends out there you want to massage or something. You can't get my hands on them. More questions on Thursday? Let's get some of this out of the way. I was going to say, one of the, uh, at least Andy and I were talking yesterday with regard to that number nine Wally, uh, team team manager staff two level. Mm -hmm. And if that's going to be the case, then future state, every single manager in that facility ought to be on the fence as a part of the program. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I think we need to talk about reward systems. Mm -hmm. um, how they will work and what what they do for you. I think, uh, you know, we've got to make some basic decisions because, you know, you can extend the point a mile now. Uh, we say, traditionally thinking, those staff two guys ought to be on the Senate. Well, well why shouldn't the technician also be on the Senate? Well, that's, that's the ideal from a game chair standpoint. Uh, if, if they, in fact, are causing the bulk of the results, then, you know, why shouldn't we share equally? So that is one of those things we'll have to deal with when we start talking about reward systems. So how far you take it? Now there is some, you know, in our meeting uh, with Hayes and, and a few of the compensation guys, they, there was not a lot of resistance to extending that point. I think we would have to develop a hell of a lot of specifics as to how it might work, uh, how we might make it happen, what are the downside risk and certainly one of the benefits. So uh, I think there's an openness in the uh, corporate guys back east to at least listen. Yeah. Well, I was reading a recent article last month and it was written by a scientist and saying that in Japan they pay the actual inventor and the innovator for his successful invention where in the States once you get into a corporation, they patent an idea. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pat it yeah. on the back and you sign it. Now, so you're saying you're going to turn everything over. And it's basically yeah. came back to that the technician came up to us and said, hey, here's a much better way of running this prior. I think I can get the oils way down. In the past, we're traditional. Hey, thanks a lot. And we put it in our pocket. Sure. And we just get, and sometimes we don't even pat them on the back. That's right. So who is who does deserve the reward? Who actually and how, do you, how do you how do you get it to them? Okay. What we're gonna do now is we'll go through the we'll go through the Friday presentation. And organizational model. To do that, what Joe was just saying, we backed into Thursday with Rick Reaver so that Jim could get his piece of knowing what's going on out there, we decided to reprogram the robots so that when they run along the battery, they all gang up on Jim and Snell and beat and cry to him a little bit. <laughs> what our objectives were yesterday was to go through and look at the uh, uh, design for the warehouse model. The first thing was to go, as we said,
stated in our objective to finish the uh, external environment scan for that, then to move on to uh, defining the wirehouse primary response, the objectives, people, criteria, values, and that piece on through. So what we decided to do, go back the same way that we had looked at the corn models and do a flow chart to get our various analysis for that. To go through some of the coding, we started out yesterday morning after looking at the external, which I'll go through in a moment, uh, laid it out in black, then went back with the red and tried to look at our boundary task or uh, dividing task, whatever all the terminology is, and went back to the receiving piece in blue to see what we could intermingle in the rest to look at boundaries, how we tied people together. The red on the bottom for carbon sorting and variety packs, the old ship where we forgot that piece until we got through it. <laughs> <laughs> we decided we were going to leave that for future managers. Now we're going to come up with that. That's the old hurry. <laughs> anyway, you guys came up with a, a big one that uh, we hadn't paid attention to, and that's storing four-way pallets. I mean, we will be getting those suckers from what, suppliers right. and from other plants, and what the hell do you do with them? <laughs> We don't have space. We thought about firewood, but we didn't yeah. have <laughs> We're going to have, well, once a year, we're going to have a bonfire. Yeah. Back 40. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Make a method oh, clean. Put in a solid bo uh, boiler. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so we started looking at the external environment for the wirehouse to start building our design. Who are they? Who are the people we'll be servicing? Servicing, or who will we be needing things from? Production units, i.e., our lifeline, distribution, our suppliers, suppliers from the standpoint of corporate people and materials uh, and the other groups down there who supply us, uh, the vendors who will be sending us products, other plants, how do they affect us? Uh, and that back through our zone coordinators, uh, our support loads that we will be sending out, support we'll be receiving. And then we took another look at purchasing in terms of headquarters purchasing, Jack Middleton, Bill Yost, those people to establish our contacts for us. Then we started taking those breakdowns and saying, what will they want from us and what will our responses be? First going into production, uh, what do they want? You know, no backups, plenty of material, availability, order info, what they need to run a smooth, consistent operation. And looking at it in terms of our response, can we do it, can we not? Most of the items we agree, and as we go on through it, you'll see we went to, it's things we need to do, but it's negotiable, it's a agree if with the contingencies that will be in place, i.e., they need data on how we're doing, what makes us a high-performing plant, uh, what they need to, do, to see from us that ensures that we're on the right track, that we are high-performing. Again, our response is available in mutual uh, is, there, is there a single report that all that information is on? Does anybody know? What's the SSR? You mean that, that's not, that's just a service. That's a service. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, no, no, it's going to be taken off several reports. Mm -hmm. Your O20 has your mm -hmm. cases per man out. Yeah. It's yeah. on several different Yeah, that's, what, that's why I was asking. Is there a single right. report? Because I just happened to think about information systems in the plant. You know, we. We would like to be able to get that information out, that data out, not only for the managers, but for the technicians, so that we know how we're doing. Right. And uh, I guess when we start talking about information <coughs> systems, you know, maybe there's a new format. We well, have our they don't have the WPS No. We had an implant 2103 that we put out that covered virtually everything. All that. And yeah, covered yeah. everything from, from safety to uh, cases produced, pounds per man hour, uh, accident frequency rates. And it was it a took weekly. the whole nine yards. That's a weekly report that was put out. And there's some programs already set to come with this uh, 8100, I believe, yeah. mm -hmm. from the traditional uh, MSAM on accountability type thing that you could flush you with that, other reports. That PC uh, report on shipping, have you been instituting that one? Uh, Shift phases and day, week to day was instituted. Vancouver was one where I've seen that. Program. We use one similar, you just Monday, Tuesday, yeah. week to day, Thursday, week to day. Gives you a week, week to day, day period to day recap of, of cases handled per man hour. And, yeah. and it also broke it down by belt and DC. Well, we kicked this around some of the groups and tried to compare to other plants existing and what would be uh, best for us in a HPS system. Uh, one thing that we've seen in the past is the instantaneous feedback to the people, such as the process controls using the other plants, the people going
go out and they clock themselves on how long it takes to, to load a trailer, how many cases to get their cases per man hour. At the end of the shifts, they know. And then there's you know, that piece with the uh, MRP reporting uh, and possibly PC use uh, to plug it into the end of the shift that way so that you've got it. And I think the key point is that these support groups will want data, you know, how we're doing by shift, by day, weekly, period, day. Then we've got to look at it as we go through it, through the environment and our people group, they need that feedback on a daily basis. So that as we give that daily information, we will be uh, gathering and accumulating that to go out to our other support groups. When we look at that message there is if we're going to spend time, and it's so much time, we'll do it on making sure the people in the plant have what they need to manage their business, and that's why this one, you know, that may not fit. They may have to get their report somewhere else. Mm -hmm. We'll service the system first. Okay, now, Harry's group is working uh, with a similar concept. Philosophically, they're on the, the same wavelength that we're on, that we uh, may have to have something structured different for us. So next week when we're in the PAC meeting, we'll have an opportunity to see what Harry and his people are coming up with and maybe kind of guide and direct some of that. Hey guys, here's what we're going to need. We'll need some exception from the corporation in terms of how we report information or how you guys feed it back to us. But Harry's group is working toward that, so it's not foreign. We seem to be coming up with many of the same responses and thoughts. Then we went to sales next, wrote that one down. What do sales want? All the products that have got ordered, it's back to reporting again, uh, taking their add-ons, provide uh, promotional support, they want quality product, timely delivery, and whatever else we left out. Uh, again, the response is agreeing with it. Add-ons, that's one of those items we've got to talk about. What's the uh, availability of product in the plant? Can we make that turnaround? Distribution traffic. But this goes back to the question, Wally, of where is that loop? So we are, we work that off of a traditional layout for the time being with they want timely VSPs, low quality dispatches, clean trailers, mechanical problems reported to them, feedback on late deliveries, manifest pick order the same, proper case labels, backhauls where applicable, uh, and depending on uptime of the computer, uh, getting the invoices back on time, family dispatches, the same logic, uh, clean trailers, negotiate, who does that, shag driver for distribution, or our people, how does that fit into our group with the conversion unit? We haven't given that driver to them, them yet, <laughs> so, you know, there may be some thought on who has the, the donkey driver. <laughs> Just a thought, Homer, but what really makes sense if, if, if you want to have some control over the condition of that yard, okay, that you keep that guy. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a thought from our experiences of you know, you're managing somebody else's person when you get into that. Yeah, you know, that's that's a big thought with me on the traffic distribution piece of how you control that whole conversion. Group. Like we were talking yesterday, you got continual pushing between the uh, drivers, pickers, loaders. You screwed this load up. So if you rotate the drivers and the pickers loaders, you solve some of that, it's going to be hell when the guy gets out in the field and he's saying, this load is screwed up, and he looks at the sheet, I loaded this sucker yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, you know, you look, you take a look at the, the guy who moves your furniture. I mean, he's the same guy who loads that truck. And uh, he's not going to load it so that he's screwed up when he delivers it at your place. He's going to make it easy for himself. Right. <laughs> he's not going to put your shit on the front when you're the last guy or first guy that's been loaded. Right. He also pays for the damage, which is one that's step further. Yeah. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Not sure how we're going to be able to resolve that one yet, guys. That still is a uh, you know, traditional boundary that's uh, artificial as far as we're concerned, and we've agreed that, you know, shouldn't be there. Uh, Depending on the carrier it comes in on, how we unload that, 
what is our efficiency, how long do we keep a trailer tied up, uh, or a driver as the case may be. Uh, accurate reports, mock report, material variances, so that those people externally ordering material for us know where we're at, where we're going, what we need, and so that we know accurately what we need to order from week to week. Let me uh, take over for a while. I gotta take a trip. Let me just uh, I give you all just keep a it. little different thought on uh, the salt if you want to season. Which is that? That's that red button. Well, I guess it's that. Yes. Um, we have in the back of the plant a, uh, an unloading lamp. And the uh, design concept that I was working against was that uh, seasoning would be unloaded on the uh, east side of the plant where corn potatoes and things like that come in as opposed to bringing that stuff uh, through the warehouse. The original um, engineering design concept was that the materials were going to be unloaded um, in the ASRS and stored in the ASRS. And I objected to that and changed that and then have them, had them put in a, a seasoning room right off the kitchen. Is that, that open area now that the cranes are working in? No. It's that little one. Oh, yeah. It's, the, it's a large open room where the, where the cranes were okay. working the last time you guys were there. Yeah. It's right off the uh, kitchen on the north side, uh, next to the potato chip fry. That's where seasoning will be stored in our plant until we run out of space. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, and that's a piece of info. I, where does it come off the trucks, Molly? You can take it off the trucks. On the east side, there's a ramp right next to the uh, where the potato dumper is. Well, it's on the other side of the rail. There's a concrete pad mm -hmm. out there with a ramp. And it comes in through the potato warehouse where the and you bring it right yeah through the potato warehouse the and down through or either up through um, well I guess you can't bring it through the trash out because you can't run the truck through there but the idea was we'd bring it up uh, along by the potato chip fryer and take it on around into the seasoning room and store it up there so there's a couple ways you can work it you can still you can bring it through the ASRS if you wish to do that and then take it through packaging out into the kitchen, hand truck it. Uh, you can work it either way, but I'm just telling you there's there's another option. Sure. Okay. And handling that stuff. And they haven't put that wall up on one side of that room yet, have they? Um, that that's where I'm thinking it's the. It's right by the maintenance shop. You come out of the maintenance. Shop. Oh, okay. We're oh no, 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 no that's that's train. where the no, that's where the CCSS uh, areas. The, the, tanks. Uh -huh. the cleaner, clipper cleaner room is the far yeah. room, and then the next one coming back this way is the, where those uh -huh. sequential soak tanks will be. Right, where they're digging the floor okay. up. This is on the okay. other side. This is on the, the other side. Okay. On I've the north side, that. just next to where the yeah. potato chip fryer is. Behind the potato bin room, as a matter of fact. There's a large okay. open room where, right. where we uh, are going to store the salt and seasoning or whatever. I know that fryer has moved back some right now, but once they get that oil line, Getting, you know, getting up that aisle, you mean? With hand trucks, it probably might be all right. Yeah. The electric hand trucks might work well. So, Homer, I mean, that just means you, you might you might sure. get off on another track. You may help you stick with what you have. Uh, but gives you another option, okay? Sure. We went on down through the items. Uh, suppliers need feedback on their quality. And bottom line, they want to get paid for what they send us. We disagreed with that one to and be part of our team. Mm -hmm. uh, other plants don't need support for uh, produced product from us. Uh, they'll be trying to take pounds, service area from us, doing that piece. Uh, fresh codes, quality, time of delivery, proper invoices, no adjustments, performance information, uh, transfer of materials for emergency situations, used cartons, and on and on. Homer, come back, let me see that. Okay. I, I just saw the no while I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we went to the orange button. Stops the primary purpose of the wire house to 
overseas store ship real life products. Um, down and delivery and receive and store material and whichever scope those pieces go into with the uh, uh, facilities we've got to work in. The objectives overall to achieve the lowest inventory loss, stales, and manufacturing defects in the company. Be the lowest cost per pounds for shipping and receiving. Have the lowest adjustment rate, the highest uh, trip rate of cartons in the company. Want to have the highest sales compliance index in the company. Just to go through some of the high performing issues and generalities. Mm -hmm. We looked at people objectives, start tying some of the tasks of people, the whole concept together. We want to provide a safe working environment, adequate training, and we kick that around a lot. What is adequate training? How do we term that? Is it ongoing, um, upgradable training? What, what is the scope? We've got to look at job satisfaction of the people. And job satisfaction and self-esteem is job satisfaction foster self-esteem so that the people are gung-ho, come in, want to be a part of the team, part of the conversion unit, instead of, uh, you know, goddamn, it's my day to sweep today, mm -hmm. or that type of thing. Mm -hmm. We want to provide steady income. Environmental objectives to provide uh, suppliers with timely orders, accurate reports, etc. Provide production with their needs. Provide the local community with the opportunity for long-term employment. Okay, now for this particular conversion unit, you know, that's the first time I've seen uh, um, getting toward developing some specific objectives. Um, is that going to be the program for the other conversion units? At each, at, each, at each work team. Okay. I don't know the smallest unit. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just, just the, working through this warehouse has been the best experience mm -hmm. because right. we've seen somewhat of an end result. Yeah. You know, we've gone through the whole piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the things, too, on working through the warehouse, that was the first one we took through on our own. Okay. Without even reviewing what anybody else Somebody else knew was we started off with what we thought it should be, took it through flow, and then went through the entire uh, system of what, what we had to provide, who had to provide it, and laid the whole concept out. And I think it came out better than the rest. Right. Right. That's good. That's good. That's good. I think we all agree on that. That's good.